Robert Rodriguez, the only filmmaker I know who can make like, these very weird kids movies that are only for kids, and then just make these straight up B-rated, violent, grindhouse action films. So, it's so weird. You can go movies just for kids, then you can go movies just for uh, masochistic adults. So yeah, Robert Rodriguez, what a weird guy. <laughs>everyone welcome to another ranking here's my ranking of all of robert rodriguez's movies from my least favorite to my favorite yes robert rodriguez is a uh, strange and unique filmmaker to say the least uh this guy makes a lot of weird kids movies that i really don't like but he also makes a lot of weird b-rated uh action movies that are very violent that i also really don't like sometimes but he does have some of these gems these really hidden gems in these certain films that I just do, I do love, and they, there's a reason why I keep going to a Robert Rodriguez movie. Every time I see Robert Rodriguez making a movie, I gotta see it, because I want to know how good it's going to be. Most of the time, it's not, but occasionally he does those really great films, and yeah, he's not, he's no Tarantino, but he's still a very talented filmmaker, and a filmmaker that I do admire, and I do, I appreciate his style, and a filmmaker that I just really want to talk about, yes. I thought I'd rank all the films he has directed. Not just, like, written, just directed films that he's made. Yeah, he's done 15 films, so let's just get to it. Here's my ranking of all of Robert, Robert Rodriguez's movies, from my least favorite to my favorite. Coming in number 15 is obviously Spy Kids 4, All the Time in the World. This movie is stupid. This is the first movie to have the 40 scratch and sniff. Aha, this baby shit himself. Smell it. Why the fuck would I want to smell it? Uh, I can't believe Ricky Gervais and, like, Joe McHale say, said yes to this stupid film. This movie doesn't even really have any of the original cast of the Spy Kids, not until, like, the ending of the film, and this movie's dumb. The effects are laughable, the characters are one note, none of the jokes hit. I don't even think even toddlers would think this movie's funny, and yeah, this is the worst thing he's ever made. I, I don't even know what he was smoking when he was making this film, but don't smoke it again. Conan number 14 is The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. This would be almost my worst, because I hate this movie. This is also a laughable effects. This movie looks like he was on serious acid making this film. It is just weird and trippy. Not in a good way. It's actually just really stupid and dumb, and it's mind-numbing how dumb it is at times. These characters, Taylor Lautner's in this film, and oof, this bad acting kid, and... The only thing that's sort of funny in a bad way is, is just hilariously bad, is the villain. This little kid who is like wears this cape and stuff. He's like, he's so over the top. It's, it's pretty funny watching all his scenes and stuff. And yeah, that's the only thing that got a little entertainment from me. But the rest of this movie is just garbage. Coming in number 13 is Spy Kids 3D. Game over. It has Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. Are you? That's not a Stallone impression. What the hell am I doing? Yes, <laughs> you Adrian. That was a little better, but not much. But still, Stallone did a kids movie, and well, he wasn't ants, but he did this movie. He's a villain. He's awful. This film, and Alterra Banderas is barely in the film, and mostly is about uh, Junie, Julie, Junie, whatever the fuck the the brother's name. It's about him going into this virtual game and stuff. Stopping the evil Stallone, getting his parents back, rescuing his sister Carmen, and don't give a shit. The 3D effects look shit. The effects look shit. The acting is still shit. This movie, that's right, it's shit. Conan number 12 is shorts. Yes, shorts. This is not about actual a pair of shorts. This is about a bunch of kids. They find this magic rock. And it just grants you every wish that you want. And basically, these kids take this rock as an advantage. And, you know, like they like to screw around with kids from school and wish for all the things they ever wanted. But then they have to suffer the consequences. It's a dumb movie with a dumb premise with no imagination into this film. And just, I don't know, there's no ray of, like, hope in these kids' films for Robert Rodriguez. Anytime he makes a kids' film, there's they're just... They're lifeless, corny, silly films that only I think kids would watch. And I don't think that's a compliment because a true good kids film is a, a film for everybody. Like everyone, a fam a true good family film is for the whole family. Adults can watch it. Kids can watch it. And 
That's why Spielberg did such a good job when he did kids' films. And, like, these films, like shorts, are just childish, juvenile films that uh, no one watches anymore. So, yeah. Skip this one if you haven't seen it. Code number 11 is Machete Kills. Yes, the sequel to Machete. Oh, my God. God, this movie is dumb. This brings in, like, sci-fi elements and stuff. It's got Mel Gibson in the movie. <laughs> oh, my God. That Steven Seagal is a villain, and the first one was awful. But Mel Gibson is just as awful. This movie just goes... This movie just goes silly, and just... It goes for the straight B-movie factor, but... It's just not for me, and it's got a lot of just bad actors in this film, like Michelle Rodriguez, and... Jessica Alba. Danny Trejo, he, he's very self-aware of what kind of movie he's in. And that's fine and all, but, like, this movie is just so stupid and ridiculous. Just, I get it, that's what it's trying to be. Just, it's not my kind of shtick. Code number 10 is Spy Kids 2. Yes, this is actually a pretty cl critically acclaimed film. And I'm not a Spy Kids fan. I, I, I enjoyed uh, some of them when I was, like, a kid. But just, I'm not a fan of these movies. I just don't, uh, I don't think they're that great. And, uh, I don't know, this one... Has some cool story elements. I can tell these kids are really trying and stuff. Just, I don't know. Just, uh, it's, just, it's rehashed, recycled plots from other spy films and stuff. Uh, the gadgets, the all the effects don't even look all that great. Again, there's not much imagination into these uh, films. And there's just nothing clever or unique about them. And just, I don't know. The Spy Gets 2 is obviously better than 3 and 4. But just, I don't know, it's not for me. Code number nine is Machete. Machete is not good, but it is better than Machete Kills because at least there is some kills that are pretty badass. Again, she has a lot of actors that aren't great. Like, again, Steven Seagal is a villain. You got Lindsay Lohan. Again, Jessica Alba, Michelle Rodriguez. You got a waste of a Robert De Niro. Um, and then you got Danny Trejo, who is actually the best part of this movie because he just barely doesn't talk. He just, like... He just kills bastards in this movie, and the kills are a lot more cool and creative in this one, and it was a little more just, like, it just stayed in, like, one setting and stuff. Like, Machete Kills just went everywhere, like, what, where, where's this movie going and stuff, but this one is a little more cohesive to follow, but, it, follow, but it's, just, it's still not that good and still not my kind of shtick. Conan number eight is the first Spy Kids. This one's a loved film, which is fine. I think there's some good stuff in it. Uh, I like Alan Cumming in the film. Uh, there's some elements that are pretty cool and stuff. There is some funny moments here and there from mostly on Terry Banderas, but it's still not good, in my opinion. I still don't like... I can't get into this world. I can't get into these characters. I just I just don't give a shit about these movies. This one's easily got the mo most... Uh, imagination and more creative ideas in it. Just, it's still, it's not my thing. Code in number seven is Once Upon a Time in Mexico. This, I enjoyed this film. I thought this was a fun film. I love Johnny Depp is the best part of this movie. He is so great as this villain. Super funny guy, super sarcastic. Loved him, everything he was in. Oof, what happened to him though? Oof, crazy. Tony Banderas is great, the Ash is great. It's super violent, super over the top, but it's a fun time. Conan number six is Sin City, a Dame to Kill For. This was under it. I don't know why this got panned. I thought this was a pretty fun film. I thought it was really stylistic. The effects are really cool. It's the only movie you'll ever see Jessica Alba give a okay performance. I love Jessica Levitt's story. I loved Christopher Lloyd in the film. I liked, um, I liked Josh Brolin, but I thought uh, Clive Owen was a better Dwight, but... Every scene with Eva Green as the Dame is so great. It's so... I love the film noir style. I love this uh, this look of Sin City. Like it's a comic book brought to the screen with all this amazing CGI. The CGI building worlds like this is so cool and so inventive, and just, I love it. I thought this was a great film. There, there are flaws here and there. It's definitely not as good as its predecessor, but I think this is a good film. Coming in number five is The Faculty. This, <laughs> this I have a huge soft spot for. I used to watch this when I was a teenager a lot, and I loved it. Well, I loved watching this all through in high school. Uh, Crazy film about these aliens that uh, basically go into the bodies of all the faculty, of all these high school teachers and stuff. It's up to these high school kids, basically, to fight against these aliens. And this is a super violent film, and just it's a straight horror film, and very comical at times because <laughs> you find out what kills the aliens. It's cocaine. Like, it, when you spray them with cocaine, <laughs> that's what kills the aliens. It's something in the in the... 
in the in the cocaine, some ingredient in the cocaine that kills them. It's just super funny. There's some mystery elements. There is a lot of great dark comedy. I love Elijah Wood. Dr 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 I love Elijah Wood, Jordana Brewster, Josh Hartnett, all this film. They're all really great. It's, just, it's a ridiculous film, but this is my kind of ridiculous. Coming in number four is El Mariachi. El Mariachi. This is a straight, like, a Spanish film, but, yeah, I, I like this movie. This is, this is not Antonio Banderas' El Mariachi. This actor is still really good. It's got a lot of cool, violent images in this film. Badass, ac bad, 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 badass action scenes, what I meant to say. Good editing, good cinematography. I think this is a really cool indie film and a really good start to Robert Rodriguez's career. And yeah, just not a great film, but another film did the elementary actually story a little better. And that film is. Number three is Desperado. Yes, Desperado, my favorite El Mariachi story. I love Desperado so freaking much. I love Antonio Banderas in this film. I I love like Cheech Marin in this film. I love Danny Trejo as the knife thrower guy. I, I love Steve Buscemi in this film. It's so great. Uh, because about this guy, he's looking for a guy, uh, a guy named Bucho, who uh, killed his wife and stuff. Well, was responsible for the death the, the death of his wife and stuff and. Basically, he comes in with a suitcase, uh, guitar, a guitar case full of guns, goes to all these bars that are owned by Bucho, and fucking takes out all these guys just to get to Bucho. But then you find out a twist with Bucho. I don't want to say what the twist is, though, but still. Really great film, great action scenes, very bloody. It's got that B-rate style uh, of filmmaking, but also got some really grimy stuff in this film and really good performances actually and I think this is just a really fun film and yeah I love the music in this film as well and yeah just love Desperado and also Tarantino's in it he's great too. <clears throat> Coming in number two is Sin City the first Sin City this so good uh, so good I know uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez had help directing segments in this film but uh, I'll just give it to Robert Rodriguez this is a great movie uh, Really great characters. Again, it's putting a comic book right, in, right on the screen and stuff. That's what, like, uh, 300 did and stuff, but that's what Sin City does. It's putting the comics, the, the graphic novel, right onto the screen. It feels like you're just watching a graphic novel on the big screen. It's just so cool, so effective, so innovative. It's beautiful to look at. The CGI in the backgrounds are beautiful, and the performances are all great. Bruce Willis, uh... Clive Owen, uh, Rosario Dawson, uh, fucking love Mickey Rourke as Marv, he's so great, uh, a lot of people are great, so Jamie King, Michael Clark Duncan, a uh, big huge cast in this film, even, uh, oh, what's her name, uh, Devin something as Mia, uh, she is so fucking great, she is fucking crazy this film, um, Benito Del Toro is in this, Brittany Murphy's in it, oh, so many people are in this movie, Jessica Alba, ugh. but still, uh, I love this film, I love all three of the stories, uh, Dwight's story, uh, Harrington, is it Hardigan, Hardigan's story, Marv's story, all three of their stories are very interesting, it has that very film noir style and stuff with the narration and everything, it's a straight neo-noir, but also a great graphic novel film, Just, I, I love how this movie is made just super stylistic, super violent, super well acted, just good time. And my number one favorite Robert Rodriguez movie is, oh, it should be everyone's favorite, It's a Dark Night. It's a Dark Night from Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> so good, I love From Dust Till Dawn. Quentin Tarantino, George Clooney, George Clooney, one of his most vulgar roles ever as Seth. I love him in this film. Uh, Cheech Marin's in it, as multiple roles, uh, Danny Trejo's in it, of course, uh, Harvey Keitel, Juli Juliette Lewis, love this movie. The movie begins like a Tarantino film, then ends like a Robert Rodriguez film, because the beginning is just the Gecko brothers trying to get their way to Mexico, and basically they kidnap this family, take their trailer, and basically smuggle themselves into the Mexican border and stuff, but then the second half happens, and that's when they go into the, t the, into the titty twister, and they find out the Titty Twister is full of vampires. And they have to fight their way out of the Titty Twister and make it, you know, make it to sunlight and stuff and try to survive. And yeah, this is a great, great movie. Uh, Selma Hayek's scene is a very memorable scene for obvious reasons. And I love it. I love George Clooney in this film. I love how Robert Rodriguez directs this movie. I love when they all start, like, fighting the vampires and you get to meet, like, Sex Machine and stuff. <laughs> 
so many great stuff in this movie. I, I like the first half more because it feels like a straight uh, Tarantino film. You also have like John Hawks in it as like the clerk and stuff. And I love that, the entire first half of this film because it feels like a Tarantino film. But the last half is still great and still fun. And just the movie as a whole is just so good. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Robert Rodriguez's movies from the least favorite to my favorite. So yeah, in the comment section, both please tell me. Did you agree with this ranking? If not, give me you guys ranking of all your, uh, of all, <laughs> of all of Robert Rodriguez's movies. If you can't rank them all, just give me your favorite and least favorite. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, with this video, please subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.